are several different scenarios that we will run into when it comes to dividing radical expressions. Now, this first example, the square root of 25 over the square root of 16. Well, this one's very straightforward, one step, very simple, because 25 and 16 are both perfect squares. So, all you have to do here is, is take the square root of both of those, and if 5 over 4 were to simplify any further, you would simplify it further. It doesn't in this case. So, that's it. Okay? But well, what about in cases where they aren't perfect squares? Like the next example. 3 square roots of 6 over 2 square roots of 15. Well, the first thing that I would do to this problem is I'm going to analyze my coefficients, okay? The 3 and the 2. See if they simplify at all. They do not. Now, there's a property that says if you are dividing square roots, you can just divide what is under uh, each individual square root. So we can simplify 6 over 15. Okay? 6 over 15. Both 6 and 15 are divisible by 3. So I'm going to start by dividing both of those by 3. Now, the 3 does just kind of disappear because you've got it in the top and in the bottom, so it, it's just gone, okay? Now, we don't like to leave square roots in the denominator, okay? We do not like to leave square roots in the denominator. So we are going to do something called rationalizing, okay? Um, I feel like we talked about this in Math 3. If you had me for Math 3, we did talk about rationalizing briefly, um, but... If you didn't, no biggie, okay? We do not leave square roots in the denominator, so to get rid of that, we are going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 5, okay? What that accomplishes for us is in the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. The square root's gone in the bottom now. And in the top, use our multiplying properties. That would be 3 times the square root of 10. So our final answer here is 3 square roots of 10 over 10. And that's as simplified as that expression will go. Okay. Now, um, you should check your radical. You should check under the square root, see if that will simplify. Square root of 10 does not simplify, so we're good there. Uh, you should check your coefficients, see if they simplify. 3 over 10 does not simplify. And do not fall into the trap of wanting to divide this 10 by this 10. Okay, because this one's under a square root, this one is not. We can't do anything. That is the final answer right there. Okay? Why can you do that? Okay, that's a good question. Why can we just all of a sudden multiply the square root of 5 in, uh, in the top and bottom? Okay, uh, so we have not broken any rules of mathematics here because the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is 1. So we, can really, we haven't changed the problem. Um, we have just rewritten it in a way that is more convenient to what we need it to be. Um, the reason why we multiply by the square root of 5 is because if you multiply square roots by the same square root, you're going to end up with just the number under the square root. Um, so, good question. That's why we do that. Now, it is a little bit more involved, but I will show you that here in just a moment. Okay? So, just practice with this. Over 3 cube roots of negative 125. Okay, so um, before we jump into trying to do a whole lot of crazy stuff, is 125 a perfect cube? Yes. It is. Okay, well, that makes life a whole lot easier. Okay, that is always the question you should answer, ask yourself, is, is anything here, does anything here turn into a whole number? Now, it is negative 125. 
So that would be negative 5, okay? Um, and then we have positive 5 and negative 5 in the top and in the bottom. So when we write our final answer, this is how we should write our final answer. Number one, we don't leave negatives in the denominator. So we can just slide that negative up to the numerator, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're dividing by negative 1 or negative 1 on the top. It's the same difference. So we move that negative to the top. And that is simply the cube root of 2 over 3. Negative. Cube root of 2 over 3. And that's all we can do there. We can't simplify the cube root of 2. So we're done. Okay. Now, B, not so great. Okay, B needs a little bit of work here. So, uh, the fourth root of 4, I can't do anything with that. The fourth root of 1024. We need to work on that, okay? But what we want to do is the whole purpose of rationalizing is that we don't want a radical in the denominator. So instead of trying to simplify 1024, let's see if we can multiply 1024 by something to give us a perfect fourth power. So I'm looking at my list. 1024 falls right before 6 to the 4th. Now, I'm not going to be able to multiply by anything to give me 1,296. So that's kind of bad. Uh, I don't think I can multiply by anything to get 2,401, but it does look like if I multiply that by 4, let's see if that is 4,096. Okay, let's see if that is 4,096 when we multiply by 4. It is, okay? It is. So we are going to multiply this top and bottom by the fourth root of 4 because 4 times 1,024 gives us 4,096, which is a perfect fourth. And the fourth root of 16, which is what we get on the top, is 2. And the fourth root of 4,096 is 8. And 2 over 8 reduces to 1 fourth. Okay? So, I'm going to do a couple more because I know this is a little, it's not quite as straightforward as rationalizing with square root. Yes, ma'am. Because, good question, why can't we just do what we did with the square root? Here's why. If we multiply 1024 by 1024 and try and take the fourth root of that, Well, in this case, it does work, but <laughs> it works in this case because we ended up with all whole numbers. Um, but usually it, it doesn't most work that way um, because you're multiplying something by something and trying to take the fourth root. The reason why it works with the square roots is because when you multiply the square root of something by the square root of something, that's like taking the square root of that thing squared, so the square root and the squared canceled. I have a question. Okay, let me write it. Let me write it. Okay. So when we rationalize with the square root of 5, right, we multiply by the square root of 5. So 5 times 5, we can write that as 5 squared, so the square root and the squared cancel, okay? But if it's the fourth root of let's say 5, if we just multiply that by the fourth root of 5, we're taking the fourth root of 5 squared. They don't cancel in that case. Okay, they don't cancel in that case. Um, that would be, of course, the fourth root of 25, which is not 5. Okay, so that's why we can't just do what we did with square root. Yes. I found a different way to do it. Okay. Can't you just take 4 divided by 1024 and whatever that is, take the 4 yes. root of it? Yes, okay. you can do that as well. There are, there are a couple of different ways to approach this problem. Because, and actually, Seth, I'm glad you brought that up, because I mentioned that 
when we did the square roots and then I forgot it when we did this, I told you when we did the square roots, the first thing you should do is see if what's under those roots will simplify. And that would have made life a whole lot easier if we had done that because it does simplify. It's 1 over 256, and 256 is a perfect fourth root. So there are multiple ways to get to that final answer of 1 fourth. Okay? Um, so the alternate way, which is just as valid, is simplify first. Okay? 4 over 1024 is 1 over 256. The fourth root of 1 is 1. The fourth root of 256 is 4. Okay? Now, this is kind of a, I don't want to say it's a special case, um, but because those numbers end up being perfect fourths, it doesn't always quite work out that way. For example, this next one. Okay? Um, now, I would, since we're talking about the simplifying, Go ahead and simplify this to begin with. Make life a little bit easier on yourself. Okay, go ahead and simplify the 5 over 25. So 5 over 25 reduces to 1 fifth. And it's negative 25, so it's still negative 5 there on the bottom. Uh, the cube root of 1 is 1. Okay, so we've already simplified our problem quite a bit. Okay, that is equivalent to 1 over the cube root of negative 5. We don't want to leave that radical in the denominator, though. Okay, so we need to multiply by whatever will get us to the next closest perfect cube. So looking at our perfect cube list, we've got 1, 8, 27, 64, 125 is our winner. We need to multiply um, by... 25, um, yeah, let's just leave it, that's 25, I was debating on whether I wanted to make it negative. So on the top, we have the cube root of 25 over, on the bottom, it's the cube root of negative 125, because negative 5 times 25 is negative 125, so that gives us the cube root of 25 over negative 5, the only thing that I would say about this one is don't leave negatives in the bottom. So put that negative in front of the cube root in the numerator. So this rationalized is negative cube root of 25 over 5. Yes, I know it looks like we just kind of flipped the problem over and got rid of one of our cube roots but that's just has to do with the relationship between 5 and 25 in cubes. Okay, some interesting things in math like that. Okay, let's look at one more and let's look at a sixth root just because I gotta make life kind of complicated like that. You're welcome. Hmm? This is it. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. All right, so three sixth roots of five over two sixth roots of 256. Well, we can't simplify 5 over 256, okay? Not evenly divisible by 5, so we can't really do anything there. Uh, 256, we should always check and see if it is a perfect 6. Let's see here, 2 to the 6th is uh, da, 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 64, so that's not it. Uh, 3 to the 6th is 729. 4 to the 6th is 4096. Let's see if that is divisible by 256. It is. Okay. So we are going to multiply top and bottom by the 4th root of 16. So, oh, yes, six roots. Where did four come from? Oh, my word. Sorry, guys. Six root. Thank you. Six root of 16. I really do not know where four came from. Oh, it's four to the six. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so here's why. Here's why. Okay, because four to the six, which is 4,096, is the next closest perfect six 